Hello, my name is Petros Kivi, and I will be presenting our paper titled D-Dish GI, Dynamic Distributed Spherical Harmonics Global Illumination. We are a group from Tampere University in Finland, and we research computer graphics, specifically highly distributable methods that are applicable in virtual, augmented, and extended reality settings. We propose a novel global illumination rendering scheme based on spherical harmonics that is efficiently distributable. Indirect lighting is path traced and stored into a spherical harmonics light probe basis in real time, and it is applicable to dynamic scenes. Compared to the state of the art, our spherical harmonics data is 23 times more compact than in the state of the art dynamic diffuse global illumination method. Additionally, we propose an approximation for the BRDF of GGX materials based on zonal harmonics which provides efficiently calculated indirect glossy reflections. The spherical harmonics light probe path tracing is offloaded to one or several servers with dedicated ray tracing GPU hardware, and the resulting view independent indirect lighting can be shared across the several end users. First, we will go through the proposed rendering pipeline in detail. Then, the details on the spherical harmonics light probes are covered. Next, we cover the results on image quality and performance compared to the state of the art, after which the presentation is concluded. The proposed rendering pipeline consists of three larger stages. First, the contribution of direct lighting is rendered with traditional rasterization and shadow mapping. Second, indirect lighting is produced by path tracing light probes with a spherical harmonics basis. And finally, the direct and indirect lighting are combined into the final rendered result. Due to the indirect lighting calculations being independent of both direct lighting and view direction, the first two stages of the rendering pipeline can be distributed and worked on in parallel. Thus, we utilize local hardware to render the relatively lightweight direct lighting and shadow maps with rasterization. The computationally heavy path traced indirect lighting is distributed to a server with ray tracing GPU hardware, and the resulting spherical harmonics data structure is transferred back to the local client for final composition with direct lighting. Here, the rendering pipeline and the effect of adding indirect lighting is illustrated. Direct lighting handles primary visibility, which still lacks the realism of global illumination, which can be seen in rapid changes from light to total darkness on the image on the left. In the middle image, indirect lighting is stored in light probes, which is illustrated here in another scene. The light probes with a spherical harmonics basis gather path traced indirect lighting, which, uh, which is efficiently stored as coefficients of individual probes. In the final image on the right, the combined result is shown. The contribution of light directly hitting a colored orange surface can be seen as indirect lighting giving an orange tint to the objects and surfaces in the scene. Next, we look at the pipeline structure in more detail. The distribution of pipeline tasks into indirect and direct lighting are highlighted with red and blue, respectively. The indirect light lighting is path traced in a ubiquitous manner which consists of the following stages. First, acceleration structures are updated based on new geometry. Then, path tracing is done for the spherical harmonics light probes. And finally, only the coefficients of individual light probes are transferred to the local rasterization pipeline. Before this, shadow maps have been updated on local hardware and the results are combined with rasterized primary lighting and indirect lighting interpolated from closest light probes. Finally, the rendered image is tone mapped locally before display. All scene information is duplicated to both local and server side, and it can initially reside on either the local or server machine. We experimented with several spherical harmonics configurations to find a good balance between computational performance, image quality, and data size. When trying out up to the fourth order spherical harmonics basis, 
we found that the image quality and detail improvements were outweighed by the increasing performance hit and probe data size. This is why the 0 to second order spherical harmonics basis, namely the L0 to L2 basis, was chosen, which exhibits 9 coefficients and only 56 bytes of padded data per individual light probe. Path tracing indirect light into the L0 to L2 basis is possible with a single RTX 3090 GPU at 60 frames per second or over, depending on the probe configuration, which is discussed in the next slide. The probes use 256 primary rays evenly distributed on the probe sphere surface. The rays bounce up to 32 times with Russian roulette path killing, which is almost indistinguishable from an infinite bounce scheme. Furthermore, to alleviate flickering in indirect lighting, we reuse 99% of previous probe data and only account for 1% of new data. The light probes can also be updated asynchronously with performance if performance is limited due to server-side hardware. This leads to ghosting artifacts in indirect lighting, but not in direct lighting, which can still be quite plausible in some scenarios. Next, we discuss the probe structure and placement. Selecting probe counts for different scenes have trade-offs. Too few probes lead to loss of detail in indirect lighting, whereas too many probes can be wasteful computationally, especially considering the limited expressiveness of the SH basis. For the sponsor scene, more probes were used due to the size of the scene and more changes in the albedo information. For Sibenik Cathedral and Breakfast Room, lower counts sufficed due to the less color changes in materials. In final composition, nearest probes to a rasterized pixel's world position were interpolated to produce indirect lighting contributions which were combined with the rasterized primary color and shadow map visibility. The probes were placed in a regular grid in each dimension. However, automatic probe placement schemes do exist, which can reduce the number of probes needed. Nevertheless, probe placement is a subject of its own and out of scope in this paper and presentation. Our final contribution was the use of zonal harmonics to approximate GGX materials for indirect glossy reflections. This means that the BRDF of GGX materials, namely GGX lobes, are modified and fitted to a corresponding rotationally symmetric spherical harmonic basis when calculating indirect lighting. The benefit is that the calculation of the reflection lighting reduces to a convolution between the ZH GGX lobe and the interpolated SH probes, yielding only a few multiplications on each spherical harmonics coefficient level. In the right side image, 1024 values are used to fit ZH coefficients to a corresponding GGX lobe. This yielded a detailed enough lookup table for all possible GGX materials. It should be emphasized that this scheme was only used for indirect glossy highlights and direct glossy and sharp highlights can still be produced by other methods. Next, the results of the publication are presented. Image quality was calculated by PSNR and SSIM metrics compared to a 16,000 SPP path traced reference image. The state-of-the-art dynamic diffuse global illumination implemented in the G3D rendering engine was used as a comparison. Material models were thoroughly ensured to be identical for the proposed method and DDGI and all other settings, such as path tracing and probe configuration, were set to equal or similar enough. Temporal accumulation components were considered with a warm-up phase after which 50 frames were used for an averaged image quality result. Noticeable differences could be seen, especially in the Sibenik Cathedral scene with bleeding reddish tint present in DDGI, but not in the proposed method or reference images. Faithfulness to the path traced reference could also be seen in the sponsor scene, especially with more shine introduced to the bricks on the front left of the image.
In general, also the breakfast room had a closer global illumination effect to the reference where DDGI was a bit darker than the reference. The main improvements of the proposed method were the improvement of probe data compactness with relatively equal or slightly better image quality compared to the state-of-the-art DDGI. 23 times more compact probe data means a lower bandwidth requirement which lowers latency in network sensitive situations and also scales better to distribution across servers and end-user clients. The runtime of the proposed method is also noticeably better, but it may be explained by different platforms, in other words, our Vulkan implementation versus the NVIDIA optics in DDGI, and non-optimized implementation of DDGI in the G3D rendering engine. Lastly, we present a few trade-offs and limitations of our system. First, the selection of the temporal accumulation hysteresis value decides whether temporal stability is favored with higher hysteresis values or the update time of indirect lighting is preferred with lower hysteresis values. The trade-off is that higher values introduce ghosting, whereas lower values introduce flickering in indirect lighting. Second, the limited expressiveness of the SH basis means the sharper effects of the indirect lighting are lost. This is prevalent especially with highly detailed indirect reflections, such as on the left side of the teapot. However, these could be tackled in sub-situations with screen space ray tracing. In the future, we intend to investigate the possibilities of alleviating the drawback. In conclusion, we presented a dynamic global illumination rendering pipeline based on spherical harmonics light probes, which can be distributed to independent direct lighting calculations on a local machine and indirect lighting calculations on a dedicated server machine. Additionally, GGX BRDF lobes were approximated with zonal harmonics for indirect glossy reflections. We showed that with similar or slightly better image quality to the state of the art, a 23 times more compact indirect lighting representation can be achieved. Thank you for your attention.